Hi, my name is Trace. I'm in the middle of setting up to test this microphone, the Cascade Fathead Ribbon Microphone, and compare it to the Shure SM57 Dynamic Microphone. And I thought now would be a good time to talk about USB audio interfaces. A good audio interface is essential to any computer-based home recording studio or digital audio workstation because the sound cards that come with most computers are just fine for normal computer operations but are very limited for recording and monitoring. A USB audio interface is essentially an external sound card that plugs into one of the universal serial bus ports on a computer. With an interface you can use your computer to make CD and DVD quality recordings using professional level and full-sized equipment. In the first part of this video, I'm going to discuss interface basics. Then I'll cover almost all of the controls and connections you might find on an interface. The goal is to give you some idea of what to look for when choosing an interface. Let's get started. At a minimum, most audio interfaces will have provisions for connecting microphones and guitars, monitors and headphones, and MIDI in and MIDI out for connecting MIDI keyboards. When recording, the audio interface converts the signal from the microphone or guitar into data and sends it to the computer via the USB cable. The recording software on the computer converts that data into a sound wave. That data can be sent back to the interface where it will be converted into an analog signal that can be played through headphones and monitors. A mono recording is made with one microphone and its signal is split evenly through the left and right speaker channels. A stereo recording is made with two microphones with one dedicated to the left speaker channel and the other to the right speaker channel. An interface with one microphone or instrument input can only make a mono recording. An interface with two microphone or instrument inputs can make a stereo recording or two mono recordings from the number one or number two microphones simultaneously. All interfaces will have four basic controls. An input knob to control the volume of the microphone or instrument plugged into it. A mix control knob to control the ratio of what you hear between the input and the software. Next is a headphone volume control knob and a line out volume control knob. This controls the volume of the signal from the interface to the software. Let's talk a little more about the mix control knob. With the mix control knob turned all the way to the left, to input, you will hear 100% of the signal coming from the microphone or instrument. With the mix control turned all the way to the right, you will hear 100% of the signal coming from the computer or software. If you record with the mix control knob in this position, depending on the speed of your system, you may experience something called latency. Latency refers to the time it takes for you to hear the signal from the microphone after it is processed through the interface and the software. You can adjust for this with the interface control software.
Let's start with the Tascam US144 two-channel interface. This one was released in 2007 and was one of the first interfaces to include almost all of the features found on most interfaces today. On the top of the interface we have the monitor mix control, the line out volume control, the headphone volume control, two input volume controls, a mono off on switch. This is so you can record with one microphone but hear through both speakers. A phantom power switch for condenser microphones and a mic line or guitar switch. Many interfaces have a channel dedicated to electric guitars. On the front of the interface we have two XLR microphone inputs, two quarter inch jack inputs for instruments, and one quarter inch jack for headphones. On the rear of the interface are MIDI in and MIDI out inputs, two RCA jacks for your left and right monitors, digital in and digital out jacks for recording from and playing to digital devices, and the USB cable jack. The USB cable for this unit carries power for the unit as well as data. This is the M-Audio Fast Track Pro two-channel interface. It has all of the features of the previous interface, but with a few extras. Most notably, this interface was one of the first that had insert jacks. These allow you to insert digital effects processors and pedals directly into it. It also has two sets of stereo RCA jacks as well as two mono quarter inch outputs. And lastly, this interface is external powered, which means it can be used independently without a computer for live performances. Next is the Tascam US600. This is a basic interface with limited features, however, this interface has four inputs which allow it to record four separate tracks simultaneously. This interface is also externally powered which allows it to be used without a computer for live applications. The last interface is the Elisis IO4 4 channel interface. It is one of the newest interfaces. It has all of the features of the previous three, yet this one has insert jacks for all four channels. Okay, that was USB Audio Interfaces 101. As always, if you have any questions, I'll do the best I can. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.